So there's a film out there called Tale of Tales, which consists of three trippy fantasy fairy tales. One in where John C. Riley plays a king and where he has to kill a sea creature in order for him to have a kid. Another where a king has a giant flea as a pet. And the last one where Vincent Castle marries a Fiona. And while the movie is based off of old fairy tales which are parables of sort, most people are just going to see this as a weird movie. And that made me reflect back on all of the weird movies that I've seen. Those movies that are kind of creepy and maybe considered surrealist, but it's not so much because they're horrors or fantasies. It's kind of a mixture of both, and what they do is go the complete opposite route of the mainstream structure format that we're used to. And I like the mainstream structure format. I like being able to make sense of the movies that I'm watching. But being weird isn't necessarily a bad thing, because especially in cinema, you can create things that leave an impression on people in a way nothing else can. So I want to look at some of the weirdest movies out there and why they're so important. Starting off with what is actually a show that I grew up watching, and that is Courage the Cowardly Dog. The surrealist like cartoon about a loyal but paranoid dog that creeped the living Cartoon Network out of me, yet I could never stop watching it. And I feel this show embodies what I like the most about surrealist works, or those that may have glimpses of surrealism in it, and that's that it agitates your subconscious in order to feel something, in this case, what courage is feeling. And what you're seeing may sometimes be irrational or just straight up incoherent, but it serves a purpose to represent a theme or maybe just evoke emotions within you, even if that emotion may be that you hate what you're watching at the moment. We can time travel back to what most film majors know as the first surrealist film, and that is The Seashell and The Clergyman, which symbolically analyzes how people react to authority. An Chen Andalou from Luis Buñuel and Salvador Dali, winner of the first annual FHA award and the guy who melts clocks, delivered one of the most amazing match cuts of all time, which freaked out the audience in their surrealist short. Dali even worked with Disney to make a six-minute animation that took 50 58 years to be released, but I highly recommend checking out the whole thing for free on YouTube. There are many other films that we can compile into this weird list, such as Salo, which includes sadistic, feces-eating torture in order to portray political corruption, Haosu, which includes a carnivorous house in order to represent the theme of sexual maturation, The Triplets of Beville, which well, it's one of my favorite animated surrealist films, so I recommend watching it, and Naked Lunch, which is one of many wacky, wacky Cronenberg films in where a pesticide side addict kills his wife and becomes involved in a government conspiracy involving giant bugs. And of course the list continues, but I want to break it down by directors and look at the themes that they involve in their works. You have John pierre Jeanette, who most people know him for Amelie, but he has made films like Delicatessen, a surreal post-apocalyptic cannibalistic black comedy, and The City of Lost Children, where an old man tries to fight death by stealing the dreams of kids. And while his movies seem to go from weird to creepy to quirky, they're usually all embraced due to the artistic merits he shows off in his films. Others tend to push boundaries with theirs, such as Lars Van Trier, who seems to aim to make viewers uneasy with his imagery, or Harmony Corinne, who... Well, Corinne does his thing. There is also a weirdness in film that only glimpses at surrealism, but has enticed a major audience, and I'm sure you've seen many of these movies, such as the works of Tim Burton with his dark yet quirky worlds, Guillermo del Toro whose fantasies and attention to detail just grasps the audience's attention, and Terry Gilliam's use of magical realism to invoke the importance of imagination. Many of these directors include plot lines that deal with identity, sanity, and even the evils of bureaucracy. Charlie Kaufman also also covers similar themes in his written and directorial features, along with a little thing called uh, the meaning of life. He's considered to be very Kafkaesque, which derives from one of his major influences, Franz Kafka, a writer who expressed the anxiety of powerless individuals in very weird works. Thus, the word is used to describe bizarre scenarios that can't be controlled or explained, much like Kaufman's works. Miscommunication also plays a major factor in his films, creating tension not only between the characters, but in a meta sense with the audience and their understanding or misunderstanding of these parable-like films. So if you haven't seen any of his works with Spike Jones or his directorial stuff like Tenecdoche, New York, go watch them twice. Many times the wonder of these films comes from feeling like we're being dropped into someone else's dream or even nightmare. Sometimes the imagery hits our subconscious and affects us in a way we can't quite explain. Then of course there are movies that may not work for us on a personal level or even connect with us at all, but that's okay. 
Because that's the risk the filmmaker is taking, of venturing out and creating a world that fascinates them, but is so different from the norm and may even be uncomfortable. But these crazy worlds usually find a following when they're not just being different for the sake of being different. Take Alejandro Jodorowsky, for example, a man who has written some of his films on LSD, so some would argue they should be watching LSD, like most of these, but he's a dude who doesn't care what anybody else says. Like, he's premiered his films naked. He's gone out to promote his movies and disses the people who are hosting him. It's his eccentric film style that aims to make you think outside of the confines you've been put in. For example, you have The Holy Mountain, a movie that may not appeal to everyone, but has one of my favorite endings of all time. One that I consider mind-blowing, especially after you follow a Jesus-looking thief on his butt-printing, gold-pooping journey. But of course, we're still missing one director, one filmmaker who you cannot not mention when you're talking about a list dealing with surrealist, weird movies, and that is, of course, Zack Snyder. No, I'm just kidding. It's David Lynch. David Lynch is a man who from his first feature film Eraserhead to his TV series Twin Peaks and his musical career, which Crazy it's not for me, has embodied this magical realism where we're put into this familiar setting, yet everything feels way off. His features have earned him the label of being the first popular surrealist, and it's his approach to his craft that sets him apart regardless of if you enjoy his works or not. He's been quoted saying, every viewer is different. People go into a world and they have an experience, and they bring so much of what makes them react. It's already inside of them. Each viewer gets a different thing from every film. So there are some people where Eraserhead speaks to them, and others it doesn't speak to them at all. It's just the way it goes. And I believe that's the best way to describe these movies. They're not all gonna work for you, but when you find that one film that is different and peculiar that connects with you, it becomes extra special. You also may not be able to recommend them to your boys by saying, hey, you should check out Enemy, and then they do, and they come back going, uh, what? But that then makes the movies even more personal because only you can connect with them, and it's special to you. We may find meaning in a film that someone else doesn't, or be enticed to watch something and not know why we're so drawn to it, and it's that confusion that can make it so unique. As Lynch says, I don't know why people expect art to make sense when they accept the fact that life doesn't make sense either. Thank you guys for watching this video and a big shout out as always to my monthly supporters over on Patreon who make these videos possible and get special perks like getting their names right there at the end of every video. Thank you guys for watching this and I'm curious to know, out of all the weird movies out there, surrealist or just glimpses of surrealism, which ones affect you the most? Which ones you've connected with and you go, I may not be able to recommend this to anybody, but you know what? I like it, it's weird, and I'm just completely absorbed into this world. Perhaps you may even have a lot that you don't like, and you know what, that's completely fine. They may be weird and just going for the subconscious, but some of these movies may completely fail for you, and we can discuss that down below as well. We can talk about the weird, we can talk about the normal ones, anything dealing with movies down below in the comment section. And until next time, I'll see you guys later.